Hello everyone, welcome to the ctwinereview.com. I'm Matteo Fagan and today we are at uh, a very special place in Glastonbury, Connecticut to Hopewell, which I'm very excited about because I, I've never been here but I've heard fantastic things about the food. Um, and we're here with, uh, with David of Two Fly Wines, uh, a local importer here in Glastonbury. And um, Anthony, call me Tony Walker from uh, Minnow Creek Wines from Adelaide Hills in Australia. Gentlemen, cheers. 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 Salute. Salute. Good health. Hey, hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we got we to talk about the wine first. Now, first of all, I have to mention, um, any of you that are coming out to Two Hope Well and you're using a GPS, <laughs> I, just, I just feel like I just, I just had a little preview of Australia. I was heading, heading uh, on 84 and I actually um, ended up by the ferry, which your GPS might send you by. If, the, if your GPS sends you to where a ferry pickup is, turn around and go the other way back into another area because it took me down this giant, I, I was on this, this, it was like I was in the outback. I've never been to the outback, but I, I kind of felt like I was in the outback. So I'm really, I'm really uh, I'm prepared for this uh, Australian wine, and, and it was uh, quite an experience on my little car. I don't have a truck, so um, anyway, don't always listen to your GPS and uh, stay on Route Three. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about this wine uh, um, here, locally imported by Two Fly Wines, and. Um, uh, Tony, welcome. Tell us about your property and uh, your background. I know you, you studied and um, you trained in uh, uh, Languedoc. And uh, do you still have uh, French influence, or where is your your influence coming from? And well, primarily France. Yeah. I did actually, training wine studies in uh, New South Wales, University of Charles Sturt. My first winemaking job was in the Languedoc, uh, from where I learned an awful lot. Yeah. Paper was one thing, experience was another. So I learned a lot in the up, very French influenced in style and weight of wine, and this probably influences my complete book vibe. Okay. So, and I have to ask, what is it, uh, when you're not drinking your own, your own uh, wine, whose wine are you drinking? Not necessarily a producer, but uh, what wines are you looking for? Probably medium white reds. Medium white reds? When I, when I yeah. do drink red wine, medium white, agreeable tannins rather than aggressive. Yeah. With fruit balance, so often wines from Chianti, uh, Cote de Rhone, right. things of that stuff. Okay. Tell us about Adelaide. Adelaide is wine heaven, wine capital of Australia, uh, of which McLaren Vale is one of the two most famous regions mm -hmm. in the state, the other being the Barossa. McLaren Vale is 40 kilometres south of Adelaide and host to 60 wineries at the minute. Wow. And grapes have been grown there since about 1847. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's uh, let's before we actually um, get into the wine here, we have to uh, we have to bring on the food because um, as your site says itself, food uh, wine without food is like life without laughter. This is a quote from his site, and I think that's a great uh, quote. Um, and so, without further ado, let's break into some of the food. We have uh, uh, Bill Driggs here from Two Hope. Well, it's prepared a fantastic ceviche. Well, it's great to have Tony here, and, and uh, thanks for coming to Two Hope Well. We appreciate it. The wines that you uh, make are fantastic, and uh, you know we're starting here with a white wine, but the, for one, the, the Shiraz is something that we pour by the glass here, and I don't think you can find a better Shiraz by the glass uh, in, in any restaurant. I think it's a great wine. So, uh, But today it's hot out, and uh, so we're having some Sauvignon Blanc, and uh, so we thought maybe do something a little bit different, a cool appetizer, something uh, chilled, uh, and something a little bit different. And it goes great with this wine, I think a scallop ceviche. Um, yeah. Very simple dish, easy to make, and a great summer dish. Goes great with the Sauvignon Blanc, particularly this Sauvignon Blanc, because as Tony, I'm sure, will explain, it has a little bit of uh, semillon in it, which is a nice, gives it a different kind of aspect. But uh, this ceviche is just a little, uh, essentially it's, uh, scallop cooked in, in lime juice. We added a little bit of pineapple, some spices, cilantro, and things like that to kind of uh, bring out the, the tropical notes in the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice summertime on the patio dish that I think would go really well and uh, with uh, this great white wine that you guys make. So yeah. um, it's a delicious dish. So great. Well, like thank it. you. Yeah, it looks yeah. fantastic. We're going to dive into it. So enjoy. Too right, as I say. Too right. <laughs> 
All right. So you guys enjoy. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, in the nose, you get that grassiness, but not over. It's it's grassy, but it's more of that uh, more. Um, Sauvignon, more a little bit more French grass than uh, than say like to go to the other side of the spectrum like New Zealand grassiness. You know, it doesn't yeah. have that that real f just mowed the lawn grass. It's more of a, a sea grass. Like this, a this nose is very common to Adelaide Hills Sauvignon Blanc. It's yeah. a little more restraint than New Zealand style, but the breadth of fruit on the palate is exquisite. Very good wine. Nice. I'm getting a little bit of, uh, you do get a, a subtle little tropical, a little bit of tropical nose to it, but you, you have some of that. What's this, what is the soil? Um, From up here would be primarily deep loams in okay. the Adelaide Hills. Yeah. Well drained, good site selection, so you're getting afternoon sun, good canopies in the grapevine, so you're getting some shade as required because it really mm -hmm. does require some shade, it's been block. And an awful lot of investigation pre-picking. So yeah. tasting, 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 and tasting fruit till you get that very fine window. Something young blonde that just says, well, I think this is exactly right. That's no yeah. textbook. You just have to know that in your head, that's what you want. And it has it has a little more weight to it than a lot of the Sauvignon Blancs that tend to be a little much lighter. Yeah. I think this has some nice weight to it. Um, and I think we got to try it with that's this. That's an intentional thing for us. We've got to have a bit more weight and structure. Okay. A bite of a scallop. I'm sharing with you, Dave. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. I know. You can really feel the lime through that. Mm hmm. Yeah, the lime. Mm. Wow, that's delicious. What a pairing. No, that's a great pairing. As you see now, some of that very light, almost an almond creaminess through the palate of it. Seven yeah. block, it just marries so well with the flavor. And there's a right amount of acidity with yep. with this dish as well. It's not, um, I have to say the ceviche itself is not too, there's not too much acidity in the ceviche. Sometimes you can really kill the ceviche with uh, with lime. It, it ends up being like, mm. and this has got a nice balance to it where it's, uh, it works well with the lime. Mm, Definitely. Well, if I could jump in here. Let's tell us about Two Fly. Well, this adventure started about three years ago. A fellow from Glastonbury, Chris Didden, happened to be in Australia attending a wedding. And as a tourist, after this wedding, he took his family to this growing region, the McLaren Vale, Adelaide Hills region. And as a wine enthusiast, he met fellas like Tony, and he saw an opportunity, a niche, to develop a wine business in this country. And he jumped in both feet, became the sole U.S. importer for Minnow Creek Wines, and for two and a half years we've been selling in uh, just Connecticut, sole U.S. importers, distributing in Connecticut. We've been very pleased, and the customers have been very pleased with uh, Minnow Creek Wines. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, and I've tried, I'm glad I haven't tried the white, before I have tried the, um, the black Minnow. Black Minnow. Really nice fruit uh, there. It's um, really got some great depth to it as well. Um, nice weight, not overpowering, and not too uh, too new world as yeah. some of the Australian has come. And you know, I do have to ask you that is the Australian, you know, where Australia is right now, where you see it going as far as um, as far as you know, separating itself from the rest of the uh, you know, the wine markets, and where do you see the future of Australian wine? This is just my opinion. I think you'll see a lot more segmentation in the Australian wine market now. People have probably put a big blanket over Australia as simple, big, sweet, red fruit. Uh, a lot of the gear that Chris is bringing in through Two Fly shows that a lot of the more interesting wines made in Australia previously just hadn't been seen. Yeah. It shows there's a great depth to what we can actually do mm -hmm. that transcends some of the stereotypes that are currently out there in the trade. Right. And I think there's exciting things to come. Yeah, they I do think a lot of things there. extremely well. I'm seeing right now a tremendous value from Australia because you see a lot of this top-notch winemaking that's that's starting to really break out of the marketplace, and it's I think people are, are, are starting to take a real second look at the, the quality estates that are that are there that have been overshadowed, unfortunately, by a lot of big 
you know, uh, yeah. mega brands, <clears throat> but um, people are seeing that, wow, these are small production, nice quality, great value for its own category. Not great value for, you know, it's a, the, the you know, large production one, but great value for estate, you know, grown properties. It's fair to say the big producers have really properly opened the door yeah. for Australian wine, but I think when you open the door a little wider, right. you get to see another level yeah. of interest and depth. Yep. And uh, I think you'll increasingly see far more interesting Australian wines starting to hit American shores. What, and so what, um, actually, let's, let's jump into the, uh, the black minnow since we have the black minnow. Now what's your, what is the production level of, uh, right. of this black, of the black minnow? 600 cases. 600 cases? Yeah, worldwide. 600 cases worldwide, really, for the for each? Uh, 600 cases of the black minnow, 700 cases of the silver minnow, 300 cases of shrimp. Okay, wow. 600 cases, and this can be found for, you know, retail at the very reasonable, around 20, just over $20, yeah. you know, retail. That's a, that's a fantastic value. That's a great, I mean, for 300 for, cases. For one of its quality and rarity, it's astonishing. Yeah, and just that. You're getting some this. Room. I mean, it's just explosive uh, fruit bowl in the nose here, and it's um, you get a nice cedar box and this, you know, a little bit of tobacco. You know, you always see something different every time you look at this. Um, when people see oak notes, there is no new oak in this one. There's no new oak. No. No new oak in this. It's, it's neutral oak, French four, oak. Three to four year old French and American. Wow. The idea is, for me, is to primarily have a f structured fruit base just backed up by some oak maturation as yeah. opposed to oak influence. Now this, the blend here, is, what's the breakdown? Sangiovese, San 65%. Cabernet Sauvignon, 20%. Yeah. And the balance being Malbec. Malbec, okay. How is Sangiovese doing in, um, how does San Giovese do in Australia? Better and better. Yeah. Um, two principal growing regions for San Giovese. One is just below the Victorian Alps, as we like to call them, in our, in our own small way. They're not very big Alps, uh -huh. but they are yeah. Alps. And uh, the other in the Fambo. Okay. Where it's been grown for about 20 years now, and Coral Vineyards were one of the pioneers yeah. with, it, with it. But um, this is the third vintage of this that I had made. and. Um, I've just cottoned onto a very workable blend. Mm -hmm. No one that I know in Adelaide is using this in this mix. It's yeah. San Giovese, Cabernet Malbec. <coughs> right. And uh, it works brilliantly well. Yeah. It's nice. It's been one of the steadiest items in our portfolio for the, as long as we've been in business. It is in, we went around today introducing it to stores, but they've all had it. Yeah. So it's a very successful blend. Yeah. That's great. Speaking and it will go with so many things. Food. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's um, for sure. It's very diverse. Again, nice weight. It's not overpowering. It's not too big and dry and over oaked, obviously. Um, okay. Well, um, I have to also mention. I have to give a special thanks to a uh, sponsor of the CTWineReview.com. That's Southington Wine and Spirits in Southington, Connecticut, where these wines are proudly featured. Um, several Two Fly wines are, are now at Southington Wine and Spirits, um, and of course, uh, Minnow Creek is is uh, is 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 there. Um, and uh, also, I'd like to uh, thank um, Bill Driggs here at Two Hopewell for a fantastic food pairing, um, and uh, um, Two Fly, of course. And uh, Tony, any uh, any parting words? Well, I. People will enjoy these wines. There's very few of them in the United States, so if you really want to get your hands on them, get in quick. All right. Okay. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Thanks Cheers. for watching the CTWineReview.com. Salute. Salute. Catch you later.